Okay guys, we're gonna be solving quadratics again. It was uh, pretty similar from what we did last time, uh, but in this one we are incorporating imaginary solutions, which we'll talk about it, and then we're gonna be talking about complex numbers. So imaginary solutions leading to complex numbers. So let's talk a little bit about what we did last class so we can remember. Um, basically, we talked about square roots, okay? The square root of 4, everybody should know that it's 2. So it's 2. Right? What about the square root of negative 4? Now, if you put this in the calculator, it's going to say something like error non-real solution or non-real answer I don't remember exactly but we can't break this down into negative 2 and negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 right it wouldn't give you a negative what about 2 and 2 also give you a positive so we can't divide this into two nice numbers okay but we can break this down into something kind of like this 4 times negative 1 okay I'll put this in parentheses so we won't get confused and there is a rule that says that we can split this up and give this its own square root and this its own square root so basically we can treat this well and make it equal to square root of 4 alone times square root of negative 1 alone. Uh, it's kind of like when we did square root of 1 4, we can give it to um, square root of 1 and square root of 4 separately. This is division. We can do the exact same thing with multiplication. When we have this, we can give it um, to its own thing. Okay. So, let me clear some space here. So, in here, we can break this down into 2 times 2, which ends up being 2 on the outside. So, 2 because the square root of 2, I mean, the square root of 4 alone is 2. Now, there is this big rule, okay? This is the main part I want everybody to write down. So, this is the main concept of the whole lesson. I'm going to write it down over here so we don't get any confusions. The square root of negative 1, negative 1, is equal to i. It's a funky I like that. And that is mainly for imaginary. So this I stands for imaginary. Okay. So basically, um, we can break this down into two. And then we'll break this down into an I. Because the square root of negative one is the same thing as I. So in here we put a I. So all this to say that. The square root of negative 4 is an imaginary 2. Uh, so this is a bit confusing, okay? I understand. I haven't worked out a lot of problems. Uh, but I want to go over number 1. So I'm going to do number 1 with y'all. <clears throat> Basically, all I can do in here... The rule that I just explained is that in here we can break this down into the square root of negative 1 times 9. Okay. Now, in here, this rule is that we can says that we can apply to the, the uh, square root to that and to that. So we can separate this into square root of negative 1 times square root of 9. And then we can do, um, we can break both of them down, okay? So this one 
breaks down into an i because the square root of negative 1 is just i and this one breaks down into a 3 right 9 can go 3 times 3 and then we put it outside we have nothing in the inside so basically the square root of negative 9 can be simplified to be an imaginary 3 okay it is very important that you go and put the i. If the i is not there, it will be incorrect. Okay. Pause the video and go over number two and number three. I'm giving you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, number two. We can break it down into negative 1 times 20 square root square root of negative 1 times square root of 20 this should start being getting simple where we can know that this is an i and this one we can break it down into 2 and 10 2 and I was gonna say 9 for some reason, but I'm dumb. 2 and 5. So in here we get this 2 out, and we're left with the 5 on the inside. So I have i 2 square root of 5. And this does not matter if you write it like this, or if you want to write it differently, you can also write it 2 i square root of 5 or 2 square root of 5 i as long as this i is not under the radical under the square root then we are fine it doesn't matter which one goes first you can pick so this ends up being my answer now I'm gonna go over 3 and here we can break this down into square root of negative 1 times one half one fourth sorry and then we can break it down square root of negative one times square root of one fourth this is an i and this we can break it down into square root of one divided by square root of four the square root of one is one the square root of four is 2 and we just bring down the i we can put it at the front or in the back it does not matter I personally like to put it in the back of the net unless it's a square root then I don't put it in the back because if we have 2 and I have an i I don't know if this i is in the inside or the outside so to make sure that in, I know that it's in the outside I put it in the front Okay, the last one should be super easy. I'm gonna go over it on three seconds. Um, three, two, one. We break it down. There is no negative. So there is no reason to break or take out a negative like we have done in the other ones. Because this one is not a negative. We don't have to do this that we've been doing on the other ones. We can just break it down into 2 and 6 and then 2 and 3. We get the pair out. We're left with the 3 inside. Boom. Now, I teach this because it applies on how to solve these things. Okay. I'll take a second and go over problem number 1. This one. Okay. We're gonna go over the whole thing. In five, four, three, two, one. Okay, first step to do this problem is to divide by ten. I'm gonna have x squared is equal to negative twenty-five. So that we're going to take the square root this and this is going to go away and then I'm going to take the square root of the other one 
One thing that is very important is for you to do plus or minus. So I'm basically having x is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 times 25. I'm going to break this down. x is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 times square root of 25. You don't have to do all these steps. I just do them because I want to make sure that people understand where the i comes from and how we break it down. Um, a lot of you are, are going to be able to jump from here to even my next step. Okay. Whoa. Okay. X is equal to plus or minus this turns into an i. This turns into a 5. <clears throat> so basically I have x is equal to 5i and x is also equal to negative 5i. It doesn't matter if the i is in front or in the back. So these are my two answers. Uh, take some time and do 2 and 3. I'm going to go over them on 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The first step to solve this is to add 5 to both sides. And here I am left with negative x squared is equal to 144. Now, a lot of you would want to take the square root, but we can because there's a negative. To get rid of this negative, we have to divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. This go away to 1, positive, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I'm left with an x squared is equal to negative 144. We're going to do the square root. This and this go away. Square root plus or minus <clears throat> x squared is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 times 144 separately. I'm already separating this because I can multiply negative 1 times 144 and they can give me negative 144. Now I'm going to separate even more. x squared is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 times square root of 144. Whoa, and I did a mistake, guys. Uh, I've been writing square root all over, which is not correct. That needs to go away, and that needs to go away, because I no longer have a 2. Now, this 2 got away here and here. That was my mistake. Now, in here, this turns into an I. Square root of 44 is actually a nice number because we can break this down into 12 times 12. Two 12s go out, and I have 12 plus or minus. So my answers are x is equal to imaginary 12, and x is also equal to negative imaginary 12. Once again, this doesn't matter where I go, so you can go in the back or in the front because everything is multiplication but these are my answers this is the last one in here I have to add 5 add 5 this go to 0 and I have 2x squared is equal to negative 14 I'm going to divide both by 2 to get rid of this and make it go to 1, and I have x squared is equal to negative 7. Square root both sides, plus or minus, and I have x is equal to plus or minus square root of <clears throat> negative 1 times 7. This can be broken down into x is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 times square root of 7. We cannot break this down even further. There is 
not any numbers. Uh, for this, there were nice numbers that we broke down from here to here, and from this one to the five. But for the seventh, there is nothing that we can break it down. This one we can break down into i, and we just have i square root of seven plus or minus. So x is equal to imaginary square root of seven, and x is equal to negative imaginary square root of seven. Now, it's very important that you know if you are right, okay? So, I want you to test at least one of this, okay? And I want you to know how to test this in the calculator. Uh, if you want to test this, sorry, this out, okay? If you want to test this answer out, which this is the one I'm going to show you how to test, you have to put in the calculator. So, in the calculator, you're going to go using the main screen, not in y equals. You have to put exactly everything in here, such as 2. And in parentheses, I'm going to put this x in parentheses. And then I'm putting my answer, which is going to be in here. Whoop. going to be i7 not i7 I'm dumb did I put i7 i square root of 7 sorry guys you have the dumb teacher and then close the parentheses and then square it minus 5 and if you put an enter in the calculator, that should give you a negative 19. Now, a lot of you don't know how to put the i, okay? So if you don't know how to put the i, to put this in the calculator, you're going to go to second in the top left corner below uh, y equals. And then after that, we're going to go dot, which is in between, <clears throat> the dot is between the zero and the negative, that is in parentheses, in the very bottom middle of the calculator. That should be what gives you the i. So that's how you put it in the calculator. Put it exactly like this. Make sure you always put parentheses when you put it up when you're testing an answer. And you can put also the negative and it should give you the same answer. Okay, we're moving on and we're gonna do problem number four, five, and six. I'm gonna do number four with y'all. Okay, so everybody go to number four and try number four. I'm gonna go over on five, four, three, two, and one. Number four is fairly easy. A lot of you are going to get tripped up on how to write the answer. We haven't seen this. Okay. And actually, this problems four, five, and six is what's going to get us into the part of, that, of the worksheet that is completing, I mean, sorry, not completing the square, uh, complex numbers. Okay. So, in here, first step is square root. square root of both sides we have to do plus or minus so x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 16 or we can also break it down into plus or minus square root of negative 1 times 16 and we can break that further into <clears throat> i square root of 16 is 4. At this point, I'm going to get this down. x minus 3. And I'm going to make two equations. So x minus 3 is equal to positive imaginary 4. 
and then x minus 3 is equal to negative imaginary 4. And I'm going to solve individually. Now, this is where people get tripped up. You write the answer simple and nice. This is an imaginary number, and this is a normal number. We cannot combine them. So when we add 3 to both sides, this becomes a 0, and I have x is equal to i, or imaginary 4, plus... 3, and this is how you write the answer. You don't combine the numbers. This is a complex number. Basically, a imaginary number and a real number put together, they make one complex number. Uh, same thing with the other one. We would add 3, add 3, that goes away and I have x is equal to negative i4 plus 3. And you can write it like this, or you can also write it like this. x is equal to 3 minus i4, and x is equal to 3 plus i4, or even 4i. It doesn't matter as long as the signs stay the same. If it's negative, it's negative. If it's positive, it's positive. I'm going to give you a sign, so pause the video and do a 5 and 6. I'm going to go over it on 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. For number 5, we have to divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. This goes away to 1, and I have x minus 4 square is equal to negative 5. Square root both of them. This and this go away, and I have x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 times 5. I'm going to break those down into x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 alone and then square root of 5. This we can break it down into an imaginary. This we cannot break it down so we're just going to bring it down like it is with the square root and all. We still have plus or minus is equal to x minus 4. In this scenario we will build, build two equations again x minus 4 is equal to imaginary square root of 5. The other equation is the exact same thing, just with the negative. x minus 4 is equal to imaginary, nope, negative imaginary square root of 5. Now we solve. Remember, we cannot combine imaginary numbers with the real solution, so we have plus 4 plus 4, this goes away, and I have x is equal to 4 plus imaginary square root of 5. The other solution is pretty similar, plus 4, plus 4. <clears throat> this goes away, and I have x is equal to 4 minus imaginary square root of 5. These are, once again, complex numbers. They're made up of imaginary number and a real number. They're called complex numbers. I'm going to go over the last one, 6. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. And we have a... I actually don't know. Let me put in the calculator, guys. I'm dumb. Divided by negative 2, we have a mm, whoa, negative 64. x plus 4 square. Square root, square root. This and this go away. x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 times 64. Now we can break them down into 
x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 times square root of 64. Go to equations. This becomes an i. Square root of 64 is, I believe, 8. So, plus or minus, obviously. So we will build two equations. x plus 4 is equal to 8i in x. Whoa, that was the ugliest x I've done in my life. Plus 4 is equal to negative 8i. Subtract 4, subtract 4. This goes away. I have x is equal to... 8i minus 4, subtract 4, subtract 4, this goes away and I have x is equal to negative 4 minus 8i. And I write it differently just so you can understand that we can write it differently and there's many ways of expressing the sensors and they are all right. Okay, so these are the answers. Now, I want you to test at least one in the calculator. I'm going to test this one out. Okay, and this time you're supposed to put it in the calculator. I want to make sure that you know if you're right or wrong without me telling you. It's very important. So, in your calculator, you're going to say negative 2, negative 2, parentheses. Now, the x has another parentheses alone. So I'm going to add a parenthesis, and I'm going to put any of these things. So I'm going to put maybe that one. I'm going to put 8i plus 4. Notice how this is my whole answer. And now I can close the parenthesis. And then I can keep going with the plus 4. Parentheses square. It looks very, very messy. You have to enter two parentheses, but essentially, when you enter this and put enter, it should give you an answer of 128. Okay. At this moment, pause the video and do 7, 8, 9, 10, 11? Is it 11? I, re I don't remember how many I have, guys. 12. So basically do 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Do all six. Um, I'm going to work them out, but please try them before I try them. I want you to find your mistakes, and if you get stuck, then check my video. But a lot of the times, you don't have to even check my video so work them out if you get stuck i have the answer i'm gonna work them out in five four three two and one all right i'm gonna be pretty fast square root square root that goes away i have three x minus five is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 is just 2. There is no i, there is no negative, so I just have a 2. Plus 5, whoa, I was about to make a mistake. Two equations. 3x minus 5 is equal to 2. 3x minus 5 is equal to negative 2. Plus 5, plus 5. This goes to 0, I have 3x is equal to 7, plus 5, plus 5. This goes to 0, I have 3x is equal to 3. <clears throat> I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3. That goes away, and I have x is equal to 1, because 3 divided by 3 is 1. Divided by 3, divided by 3, x is equal to 7 divided by 3. And these are my answers. 8.
square root, square root, this and this go away. 5x <coughs> is equal to plus or minus i5. Five x is equal to I five and five x is equal to negative I five. I'm going to divide by five, divide by five. This goes away and I have x is equal to I five divided by five. Notice, 5 divided by 5 goes away, and I have x is equal to i. Same thing on this one. Divided by 5, divided by 5. This goes away, and I have x is equal to negative i, divide, or i5 divided by 5. 5 and 5 go away to 1, because 5 divided by 5 is 1, and I have x is equal to negative i. My answers are just negative and positive i. The other one is plus 2 plus 2 <coughs> is equal to negative 45. 5x squared. Next, we're going to divide by 5. Divide by 5. Negative 45 divided by 5 is negative 9 is equal to x squared. Square root, square root, we have a plus or minus i3. The square root of 9 is 3, but the square root of negative 9 is imaginary 3. It's equal to x, so x is equal to 3i, <coughs> and x is equal to negative 3i. I'm going to go over the other ones. Plus minus 72 minus 72. This goes away. I have 2x minus 5 squared is equal to negative 72 divided by 2 divided by 2. This goes away, and I have x minus 5 <coughs> squared is equal to negative 72 divided by 2 is. 36, negative 36, square root, square root, x minus 5 is equal to imaginary, the square root of 36 is 6, so the square root of negative 36 is imaginary, plus or minus imaginary 6. So we build two equations x minus 5 is equal to 6 imaginary and x minus 5 is equal to negative 6 imaginary. Now in here we're going to add 5, add 5. This goes away and I have x is equal to 6i plus 5. This is once again a complex number because it's made up of imaginary and a real. <coughs> plus 5, plus 5, this goes away, I have x is equal to negative 6, i plus 5, and this is another complex answer. Now this one, plus 60, plus 60, we have negative 3x squared is equal to 60 divided by 3, negative 3, sorry. That goes away, I have x squared is equal to 20. 
actually negative 20. Now square root, square root, so I have x is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 times. The reason I do this is because in this one, that one and that one are not going to all be nice. So square root of negative 1 is i, but square root of 20 we have to break it down. This breaks down into i, this breaks down into 2 and... 10, 2 and 5. So I get this 2 out outside, and then I have plus or minus i, 2 in the outside, square root of 5 is equal to x. So my answers are x is equal to 2i square root of 5, and x is also equal to negative. square root of 5, close the thing, and then 2, and then i. It doesn't matter how it goes, it matters that they are all multiplying. The last one for this solving part is minus 100, minus 100, 68 minus 100 is negative 32 is equal to negative 2x squared divided by negative 2 divided by negative 2 this goes away and I have x squared is equal to negative 32 divided by negative 2 is 16 square root square root that goes away and I have plus or minus square root of 16 which is plus or minus 4 square root of 16 is 4 now is equal to x so x is equal to 4 and also x is equal to positive and negative 4 notice that in here when it was under the radical it didn't have an i or it didn't have a negative, so there is no need to say that this is imaginary. So these are all my solutions. Once again, I want you to know how to plug this in in the calculator, so I'm going to teach you how to do it with this one. You have to put negative 3, parentheses for the x, parentheses square minus 60 in this space, we're putting the answer. Any of them. I'm going to say negative 2i square root of 5. And that should give you an answer of 0.